Hi, it's Dwyer. June the 6th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerSportsBetting.com, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's just talk philosophy, life experience for a moment here. Indulge me. You know, it's my belief, and it's a core belief of mine, that the secret to success is failure. Right, Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team the first time he tried. LeBron James got swept in his first NBA Finals. Juan Manuel Marquez, speaking of firsts, lost his first fight. Bernard Hopkins lost his first fight. Both Floyd Mayweather and Deontay Wilder were bronze medal winners, not gold medal winners, right? Go outside the world of sports. Look at the world of investing. A newsletter I follow, um, Porter Stansberry's newsletter group, Stansberry Research. And no, I'm not a paid advertiser for the product, right? I know no one involved in the venture. But let's just say Porter Stansberry, when he was a young man, got fired from an investing position. Got straight out fired, got straight out told that he did not have the talent to succeed. Understand David Tepper, the new owner of the Carolina Panthers, a guy who's now a multi-billionaire, got passed over for a promotion by a boss who owned a $42 million mansion. Well, Tepper later would buy the mansion and he would have it demolished, right? Jim Chanos worked in a steel mill over the summer and made more money in that summer than he did his first year on Wall Street. Now, we all have bad days. We all have failures. We all have learning experiences. What I want people to do is to go back and revisit Alexander Povetkin's first loss. Folks, it's his only loss. He had everything laid out for him. He was fighting Vladimir Klitschko, who could not fight inside. Right? And he was fighting Klitschko in Russia. He was unbeaten at the time. So Povetkin makes a mistake, just like George Foreman makes a mistake against Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. Povetkin keeps trying to just jump inside. And he allows Vladimir Klitschko to tie him up repeatedly. Sometimes Klitschko even gets Povetkin's head under his underarm. The fight becomes a clinch fest. But Klitschko is the one landing more punches. Povetkin loses the fight. Now, I'm just here to tell you that just like George For Foreman would never be rope-a-doped again in his career after his loss to Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle, understand what happened to Alexander Povetkin against Vladimir Klitschko, and the fight is on YouTube, is a one-off, right? Povetkin will never allow himself to lose that way again. You're never going to see, never, another Povetkin fight where he's jumping inside for 12 rounds and he's getting tied up and he keeps jumping inside. He's a much better fighter now. Understand, boxing really does come down, in my opinion, to angles, timing, spacing, right? Now Povetkin is savvy. You'll notice in fights like the recent David Price fight, 
Pavetkin picks his spots. He's not predictable. Right? I'm guessing Sean Porter has taken notes. Right? Porter, same type dynamic against Cal Brook. Well, now Pavetkin is picking spots. He's coming in at angles if he's coming in. This is a guy who can fight small, who can fight inside, but he also understands that he can't be predictable to the point where you can time him and tie him up. So he's now off at angles, right? He's over at the side. He's two-handed. <clears throat> he has a fighter's temperament, not a boxer's temperament. A fighter's temperament. He wants to trade with you. He's not running away from Vladimir Klitschko. He's running to Vladimir Klitschko. Right? This is a guy who likes to mix it up. You want to see a fight where he's mixing it up with an opponent for several rounds? Look at the Carlos Tackum fight. Right? Well, all I'm saying is this. I'm not buying. Not by a long shot. The idea that Anthony Joshua is going to bypass Deontay Wilder to fight Alexander Povetkin. Right now in the British press, they want you to believe that Joshua, who's been offered $50 million, is having a problem coming to an agreement with Deontay Wilder over a championship fight. What, 50 million's not enough? I thought when Wilder asked for 50 million dollars, I thought that was preposterous. Well, if Wilder requesting 50 million is preposterous, why wouldn't Joshua leap at the opportunity to accept the same deal? Let me also say this too. It's only in boxing that they think the public is crazy enough to believe that while they're talking about $50 million is a purse, right, for a fight involving another unbeaten heavyweight champion. They want you to believe that Anthony Joshua is thinking, hey, if we can't work out the terms of this deal, if we can't dot the I's and cross the T's, then I'm going to cross the street and I'm going to fight Alexander Povetkin. Folks, Joshua's not going to fight Povetkin before he fights Joshua for two simple reasons. Right? The first is that there's too much money and legacy involved in a fight against Deontay Wilder. I'm telling you, you don't have situations where you have two unbeaten, currently reigning heavyweight champions fighting each other. Right? Think Ali Fraser. Think Michael Spinks, Mike Tyson. Right? Just for legacy purposes. If they weren't fighting for money and you just said, who's the opponent who's going to give my guy the biggest legacy? For Wilder, it would be Joshua. For Joshua, it would be Wilder. Right? Just off the legacy reason and just off the money reason. Let me just say, if you walk into any negotiation and you sit down and they start saying, look, we're offering you $50 million, you should be looking around the room saying, well, I know I'm in the right place. You should be thinking to yourself, well, I know these guys are serious. What you shouldn't be doing is thinking, you know what, let me take less money to fight a, an opponent who doesn't carry this legacy. Who, if I beat him, is not going to give the boost to my career that the guy offering me $50 million is going to give me. So that's the first reason why Joshua is not going to fight Povetkin right now. There's too much legacy and too much money involved in fighting Deontay Wilder. The second reason, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. What else is new? The second reason is that Joshua might get his ass kicked. 
understand Joshua just fought at home isn't that where he wants to fight Wilder Joshua just fought at home he was at home we just saw an at home Anthony Joshua performance couldn't get his right hand out of first gear could he folks he had two more rounds than I have fingers to do it couldn't get off a meaningful right hand against Joseph Parker right someone should have said to him hey Anthony you know you can take your right hand out of neutral right his right hand was neutralized by Joseph Parker now you're telling me that the two-handed fighter who took out David Price, right? Didn't David Price have a broken nose? Wasn't that knockout brutal enough for you? You understand, don't you, that Prevetkin has an Olympic gold medal just like Joshua? Right? The two-handed guy who's too savvy to get hit with a jab for 12 rounds. Isn't that the punch that was Joshua's most successful punch against Parker? Folks, I'm telling you, if there's one heavyweight out there obsessed with spacing, who doesn't want to be clinched, who's not going to be predictable enough to get bludgeoned by a jab, it's Alexander Povetkin. There's real risk involved. I'm talking about real risk involved. With Anthony Joshua fighting Alexander Povetkin. Let me also say this too, and I don't say it lightly. I'm hearing spin in the media that the Joshua Wilder fight will always be there. Right? Always be there. Isn't that what they told us about Mayweather versus Pacquiao? Those guys waited so long to hop in the ring that Pacquiao started losing fights, didn't he? By the time we got to Mayweather Pacquiao, hadn't the fight lost a bit of its luster? Let me ask you, if Wilder and Joshua fight each other, but one of them has suffered losses on the way there, is that fight the same as if they fought each other when they're both unbeaten? Guys, I got to tell you, both Wilder and Joshua have holes in their game. You don't believe me? Gee, just go look at the Luis Ortiz Wilder fight. Right, folks, just, just look at Joshua getting off the canvas against a Vladimir Klitschko that had been out of the ring for more than a year. Right? Both of these guys have holes in their game. Now, I don't, I don't know what world people are living in where they think that, oh, if these guys don't reach a deal today, they can reach a deal next year. Are you positive that both of these guys can run roughshod over the contenders in the heavyweight division? Folks, I got news for you. Not only do I think the waters at heavyweight are too deep for that, I get the feeling they're guys at cruiserweight, and I know I've been saying this in multiple videos. They're guys at cruiserweight who would give these guys problems. And I know people are going to say, Dwyer, you're crazy. Manuel Char has a share of the heavyweight title. Just Google and watch his fight against Maris Bredis. Too much hand speed. Too much power. Too much footwork. Folks, Char ends up knocked out cold. Now you're telling me that these flat-footed guys, Wilder, who gives away rounds, right? Come on. Gerald Washington sweeps the early rounds against Wilder, doesn't he? I don't care what the judges thought. Luis Ortiz sweeps the early rounds against Wilder, doesn't he? How could I, in one video, be mentioning multiple fights where Wilder comes out and is swept in the early rounds? Right? As for Joshua, 
All I'm saying is, we're really making a lot of his victory over a Vladimir Klitschko who had lost his last fight before fighting Joshua more than a year later. Right? Wilder and Joshua have feasted on the Eric Molinas of the world, haven't they? I still maintain, and I know this upset a lot of viewers, right? All I'm asking for you to do is to look at the CompuBox sheet. I still maintain that the Joseph Parker fight, if that were in New Zealand, Parker could well have been declared the winner, right? Wasn't that fight a beauty contest? You're looking at the coffee box and you're left with the conclusion that Parker landed more power shots. Joshua landed more jabs. Who won this fight? Folks, the fighters left it up in the air, didn't they? So, let me just say, I'm not buying Joshua's bluff. But if Deontay Wilder doesn't accept his offer in the next five minutes, by the time this video ends, Joshua's going to go off and fight Prevetkin. Because he'd be leaving too much legacy and money on the table, and quite frankly, he could lose that fight. Let's talk about another fight. That a favored fighter, a box office gold fighter, just like Joshua, could well lose. We're hearing now that Canelo is so offended. Canelo, the guy who, let's be clear here, close fight with Austin Trout. Close fight with Arislandi Lara. Right? The Cotto fight goes the distance. Cotto and Freddie Roach thought they had won the fight. I understand Floyd Mayweather and some others feel that Canelo edged it out. Okay, fine. Right? But that's Canelo's past. Right? Canelo, who, after six rounds against Floyd Mayweather, was down by six rounds. That Canelo. Canelo's so offended that a guy who is one of the best middleweight champions in history, a guy who had a knockout streak, not in regular fights, folks, but in title defenses, Think about it, title defenses. A guy who fought Canelo and officially got a draw with Canelo, and Canelo has to know there are a lot of people out there. Let me pause the video to raise my hand. There, there are a lot of people out there who think that this guy beat Canelo. Canelo's offended that Gennady Golovkin has the audacity, has the nerve, even after Canelo has eaten tainted pork chops and stuff like that and failed a drug test and been publicly disgraced, right? Failed multiple drug tests, has been publicly disgraced. Canelo is offended that of all the people in boxing, the reigning middleweight champ wants a 50-50 split. Oh my goodness. You can imagine the air going out the room, right? Here you have a reigning middleweight champ. You want legacy? Beat Golovkin. Here you have a reigning middleweight champ. And, oh, God forbid, he wants 50%. Okay, whatever. So now Canelo, presumably with, you know, a different diet, now, now Canelo wants to fight Danny Jacobs. Folks, that's not a serious threat. For the same reasons Anthony Joshua's threat to fight, Pavetkin's not a serious threat. Who would you want to be? The reigning middleweight champion, the guy who dropped Danny Jacobs. Whatever you think of the scoring of the Golovkin-Jacobs fight, let's be clear on one thing. This shouldn't be open to debate. Golovkin's on his feet the entire fight. Danny Jacobs hits the canvas during the fight. Right? Do you feel that Canelo is going to get anything remotely resembling the legacy from beating Danny Jacobs, who's lost before? 
as opposed to beating the man who has beaten Danny Jacobs, who is unbeaten, who has a multiplicity of belts at 160 pounds. So just to understand, off legacy and money, Canelo's not going to make the money or get the legacy boost against Danny Jacobs. Then he would get fighting Golovkin and beating Golovkin. So if Canelo doesn't fight Golovkin, he's leaving legacy and money on the table. But let's talk about the second reason, and I believe you need to focus on it. You're a gambler. Keep an eye on the negotiations. Right? I personally believe that a second reason exists why Canelo can't fight Danny Jacobs, and that's because he would get his ass kicked. Let's be clear here. Danny Jacobs is ambidextrous. Right? He can fight South Paul. Canelo, by the way, Jacobs hits hard. You don't believe me? Just YouTube. Jacobs against Kid Chocolate. Folks, Kid Chocolate doesn't make it to the second round. You're telling me that Canelo, who's smaller than you think, you're looking at these weigh-ins, and you're saying to yourself, man, is something wrong with my TV here? Because Canelo's looking a little bit short here. Don't go by listed height. Go by actual height. <laughs> Canelo's much smaller than Danny Jacobs. Much smaller. Let's talk about footwork for a moment. I know Canelo moved backwards like Ginger Rogers against Golovkin. Right? Just to understand, Danny Jacobs can do so. Again, he's completely ambidextrous. He can do so out of a right-handed stance. In other words, his feet work when he's orthodox. Out of a left-handed stance, his feet still work. Who's the more advanced fighter to you? Who has the reach advantage in that fight? I'm just telling you, if they announce a Canelo against Danny Jacobs fight, hell, Danny Jacobs might even be willing to pay money to fight Canelo. Because Jacobs has to be thinking, gee, I just fought Golovkin. Hell, this is an easier fight by comparison. If Canelo... Because he doesn't want to split equally a purse with Golovkin. If Canelo's so offended that he decides to fight Danny Jacobs in New York City or Las Vegas, I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I'll be the bald man getting out of his seat making a bet at the sports window. I'll be taking Danny Jacobs in that fight. I'll expect Danny Jacobs to win that fight. Understand, Danny could work behind a jab from distance if he wants, or he can step on the gas. I believe Jacobs has the hand speed advantage on Canelo. So let me just say, I understand fighters are going to do what they have to do to get paid. Right? To get that last dollar out of a negotiation. So I understand. You might be in a negotiation like Anthony Joshua. You might be sitting there, and then they say, we'll pay you $50 billion. And I understand you have to bluff a little bit and say things like, hey, man, I, I'm offended. Hey, hey, you keep this up. I'm, I'm going to fight Alexander Povetkin. Okay, I get it. And I understand Canelo wants top dollar, and top dollar means more than 50% of a lucrative rematch against a reigning multiple middleweight champion who right now is one of the best middleweights in history. <laughs> but fight fan, let's not be fooled, right? If you were advising Joshua or Canelo, I'm guessing you'd tap them on the shoulder and you'd say, player, take the money, right? You'd say, hey, Anthony, You're a fighter for moments like this, to try to unify the title, right? This man is unbeaten like you. This is your era. People are going to question that if you don't fight this man, right? You're going to say to Canelo, player, you and I both know you lost that first fight. Okay, maybe you don't go that route. 
But you are going to tell him, look, man, if you want to be the king of middleweight, you're going to have to knock this guy off the throne. Not a guy he's already beaten. Right? So I'm fully expecting, I mean fully expecting, these guys to drop the bluff. Right? Joshua Wilder, guys, the time is now. You wait around until Gassia for Usyk or Breedis enter the division, and you're in trouble. As for Canelo, I'm still astonished. <laughs> I'm astonished that Golovkin even wants to fight him. I believe Golovkin already has historical cover. Again, Golovkin was winning title fights by KO. While Canelo was winning photo finish fights on the scorecards, right? Somebody here in the comment section explain the CompuBox numbers in the Austin Trout fight. And then give us a real explanation on how Canelo <laughs> could have won the fight on the judges' scorecards by the margins he did, given the punch counts in the fight. Right? Ludicrous. Canelo should feel lucky that he still has a boxing career. There are many out there, many, watching this video who are thinking, gee, the brother only got six months for tainted me? Right? You got other guys in the sport getting suspended a year or two for PED violation. Here, Canelo gets a six-month suspension. So if I'm Canelo, I'm feeling lucky to still be viable. And if I'm going to go for legacy, if I want to be considered the best, <clears throat> I believe the fight makes itself. Your opponent is Golovkin. If he says, look, let's split the pot, you should say, thank you. Let's do it. You shouldn't be talking about Danny Jacobs, a fighter, another fighter who might take you out. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'm particularly interested in hearing from fans who believe Joshua is so good that a fight against Povetkin, a former heavyweight champ, is a foregone conclusion. Right? That Joshua is obviously not at risk even after a subpar performance against Joseph Parker, right? Fight goes the distance. Joshua hardly ha lands any right hands in the fight. Right? Even after that, there are those of you who feel that a paradigm shift has happened. And that even talking about Joshua in the same sentence as Wilder is an insult to Joshua. Tell us why in the comment section you are certain that Joshua, who would be a big favorite, runs through Alexander Povetkin. Keep in mind, in sparring, I believe even Eddie Hearn has admitted that David Price dropped Anthony Joshua. That was David Price getting his nose broken by Alexander Povetkin. Let me hear from you. Also, there is a strong Canelo contingent out there who feels that this guy, despite photo finish fights, right? There's no Canelo Austin Trout rematches there. There's no Canelo Eris Landy Lauer rematch, is there? Right? Despite photo finish fights, there's a group of you out there who feel that Canelo beat Golovkin. That Canelo has beaten all of these guys. That the CompuBox people who put together the Austin Trout CompuBox sheet didn't know what they were doing. That Canelo should get more than 50% against Golovkin. Now I'll concede, Canelo is the bigger box office draw. I'll even concede I made a video early on saying, look, Canelo, Golovkin, Canelo should get more money than Golovkin. This was before their first fight. Folks, that ship sailed, hasn't it? They had the first fight. Dare I say, I think 60% at least of the public firmly believes that Golovkin won that fight. I think there's another group out there they're kind of quiet right now, but there's another group out there who privately feel that the fight wouldn't have been competitive at all if both fighters were clean. 
They have their doubts about whether Canelo was clean. Right? Given that Canelo would later fail two drug tests before the rematch. Right? So, let me hear from you. If you're someone who believes that Canelo is the future of boxing, if you're someone firmly convinced by Canelo's win over Julio Cesar Chavez at a catch weight in a fight in which Chavez, a dehydrated Chavez, goes several rounds, doesn't he? Right? Let me hear those comments in the comment section for this video. And let me thank you for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by.